Hey guys, hope everyone is doing well out there today. In my hands today, I have the Epiphone Les Paul Classic in worn purple. This is one of the new 2020 models in this lovely satin purple finish. Before we get too deep into this review, please go and hit the subscribe button below and the bell icon to be notified whenever I post a new video. Your subscriptions really help this channel grow, so please hit that button now and then we'll get stuck into this review. This is a really cool looking guitar. You don't see many purple Les Pauls around. So when I saw this, I literally went crazy for the color. It's such a cool color and a really cool looking guitar. It's got all your usual Les Paul specs. You know, we've got twin humbuckers. It's a solid mahogany body with a plain maple cap. We do have an Indian laurel fretboard, which is a little different. It's probably the first guitar I own with a rosewood substitute, which is pretty cool. Comes with a Grover tune as a standard and the new Epiphone headstock shape, which is pretty cool. It's got a slim taper neck with a C profile, so it's kind of like a 60s feel Les Paul. The pickups in this are the Alnico Classic Pro humbuckers. Both are coil splittable, so we've got the bridge volume here with a coil split for the bridge pickup and the neck volume here with a coil split for the neck pickup. So this is a super versatile guitar coupled with the three-way switch. Now I've been a big, big fan of Epiphone for a long time. My first proper guitar that I ever got was an Epiphone Les Paul, which is this blue one here, which you may have seen in some other videos. It's been through the walls a little bit. It's got some wear and tear and it's got some miles on it, but it's a great guitar. This is one of my most sentimental guitars, but now back to the purple Les Paul. Now I did want to come on here and do and out of the box first impressions of this guitar, but unfortunately that idea got sidetracked a little bit. I did have to do quite a lot of work to this guitar because the factory setup was pretty poor. And that really disappoints me to say because I own a lot of Epiphone instruments and they've always been great. I've never really had to do any major work to any of them. This is the first time I've actually had to really put some time in to get a guitar playable. So yeah, I suppose that did sell my first impressions of the guitar a little bit, but that doesn't mean it's not a great instrument. I had to sort the neck out. When I got the guitar, the action was very high, but the neck was perfectly straight. If anything, it actually had a slight back bow to it. So I had to loosen the truss rod to get a nice bit of neck relief back in there in order to get the action nice and steady. The Grover machine heads were incredibly loose, so I had to tighten those up. The pickups were set real close to the strings. So those needed to be dropped down a little bit too. The bridge was also set very high and the intonation was all over the place. The only thing I couldn't fix was on the E and B strings up here, there's a dead note on the 20th fret. That's because the 21st fret is actually cut too high on that side of the neck. It's okay on the bass side, but on the treble side, it is cut very high. So those notes are completely dead. So this actually does need a fret level on one of the frets as well. So again, that's a little disappointing straight out of the box. So negative stuff aside, this is a great guitar. The neck is comfortable, it plays great. The Indian Laurel fretboard is pretty nice. The rest of the frets are all great, aside from that one. The tuning pegs hold tune very well now that they've been tightened. And like I said, now that the neck relief and the action is sorted, it plays great and it sounds great. The finish looks awesome. It's pretty well applied. There's a few spots along here where it actually has overspilled onto the binding and even onto the side of the frets, actually. I'll get some close-ups of that. And I suppose my only the real negative cosmetic thing to say about this is that the binding isn't particularly well applied. There are plenty of places you can feel a rise or a dip in the binding, especially along the bottom end of the fretboard. You can actually feel where the binding joint is. I've never had that on any other guitar before from Epiphone. So that is probably a little negative thing there about the, the overall sort of finish of it, but that doesn't really detract too much from the playability. That's just me being fussy, I think. All right, so let's look how this thing sounds. Here are the three picker positions without the coil split engaged. With the coil splits engaged. Mm -hmm. 
It's a pretty versatile, usable range of tones there. I really like the addition of the coil split. That makes this guitar really versatile. So you can use it for rock and blues, but then you could also pull the coil split and use it for more country or even funk sort of stuff. If we put a little bit of overdrive through it, here's where it really starts to come alive. So here are the pickup positions again with a touch of overdrive. <laughs> Once again, with the coil splits. Obviously with it being a Les Paul, it really does handle rock tones very well. So here it is with a bit more overdrive and the same pickup positions. <laughs> Very, very versatile guitar. It can go from funk. To blues. To classic rock. There you go, there are my impressions and a couple of tones out of the Epiphone Les Paul Classic in worn purple. Like I said, there are a few minor things that aren't perfect about this guitar, but for the price point, you can kind of let some of those go. Be aware that if you do buy one, you may need to give it a little bit of a tweak out of the box to get it playing just the way you want it to play. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, I did have to spend a little bit of time with it to get the neck right and sort the action out and give it the once over. But now that I've done that, it does play great. If you've tried one of these yourself or you're thinking about getting one, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this video and what you guys thought of how this sounded and what I told you about the setup. If you do already have one, let me know in the comments below what you think of the one that you own. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe button and I will see you guys soon. Thanks for watching.